Ah, and I'm ready to go. Um, I feel like coffee's a necessity when making one of these videos. I'm going to start calling these chill coding videos. Maybe not explicitly in the title of these videos, but I don't know. I feel like uh, a lot of programmers, they make these really fast videos, and it's hard to keep track, especially when you're coding along. So I just want to do it slow and kind of chill. Maybe that'll be my trademark. <laughs> Anyway, uh, if you didn't follow me and the last two videos and you're new to WPF, go ahead and check those out first or you'll be lost. And today we're going to talk about the grid container. And if you didn't follow along, we went ahead and we started creating this console application that has a button that has some text and a label right here. And every time you click it, it increments this number by one. It's probably small for you guys, uh, but believe me, it works. Hopefully you can see it though. I think I have it recording at 1080p at least, so that'd be cool if you uh, can hopefully see it. Anyway, today we're going to talk about grids, and grid is just a container to help you organize uh, your different elements in, really, that's all it is. And, you know, think of an Excel spreadsheet, kind of, when you're trying to think of what a grid looks like, right? It has rows, has some columns, uh, the rows have heights, and the columns have widths, and uh, really, that's all you all of it really is. It's predefined areas and you go ahead and, and put stuff into those uh, into those cells. If they were in Excel they'd be called a cell, each little square in the grid and that's really what we're going to do here. So we have our grid parent container um, and what we need to do is actually I'm going to set the width and the height the height, I don't know why I put an H at the end of there, and the height of the grid. So let's go ahead and make this 300 height. We can do pixels. Um, little tip, it doesn't matter if you put 300 or 300 pixels, it, it knows it to be the same. And width, um, let's see, let's do uh, 500. So we can go ahead and see that it's centered, just like this, centered into uh, to our screen here. If we did horizontal alignment left, uh, we can put it to the left, um, but I'm going to keep it centered. So I'm just going to take this out and it's centered by default. So let's go ahead and just do that. And you can play around with those settings if you want. And from here we can go ahead and make the little definitions for the rows and the columns. Let's go ahead and do that. To do that we need grid dot row definitions tag, just like that. And mind you, I don't remember all this stuff. It'd be very impossible. <laughs> Not that there are varying degrees of impossible, but it would be impossible to remember all these stuff. What's cool is I uh, I start to tag and I just type in a little bit of it and in IntelliSense, the thing that completes this for me, it knows what I want, which is awesome. So I don't spend time trying to memorize all this. And even if I forget down the road, which I do all the time, I just Google it. You know, Google is your friend. But inside, the grid.row definition, we need a definition for each row that we make. So let's go ahead and make one. So I have row definition, and I'm not going to have an open and close tag like I usually do, like this. We have this one, this is the open one, and this is the close one because it has a forward slash right here. Um, we're going to go ahead and put the slash in the same tag, which means, hey, don't look for a closing tag. This is just going to be one line. So we have a new row definition in our grid.row definitions. And we can go ahead and declare a height for this row. So let's do that. Let's make this 100. OK. And now we should be able, in our, in our view here, we should be able to see this row now. See, it has 100. And here's a row. It's the first one. And it stacks from the top down. So let's go ahead and make another one. Row definition. Let's make this height 50. Okay, and lastly, row definition. Let's make this height. So we have 150, and the total is 300. That leaves us, if this is our last one, which it is, that leaves us with 150 left. I know, you gotta do a little math, but I think you you can do it. If not, get out your calculator. No shame here. Uh, so we have our rows, and like I said before, you can see them all. We have the 150 height one, we have the 50, and we have the 100. And I love how you're able to see it live without having to go ahead and start it every single time. It's awesome. So now let's go ahead and create a few columns. Let's just make them, uh, 
Let's see, we have 500. Let's do 100, 200. No, that wouldn't work. Let's do, I'm trying to think. Let's do 150, 200, 150, if my math is correct. So let's do grid.column definitions. See how it knows what I want already? It's awesome. And column definition. And instead of height, we have to do width. So what did I say? 150 for the first one. Second one is going to be, uh, I forget what I said, already. 200 I think it was. I need to start writing this down. And our last one is going to be another 150. That should equal 500. Cool. So now you can see them. We have 150, 200, and 150. See how it's, it's got different quote unquote cells? That's what I'll call them. We have this cell, we have this cell, this cell, we have nine cells total. So here, we can actually add things into our grid. As you can see right here, the stack panel is already placed into our first cell here. We can explicitly define what cell it's going to sit in. So if we do grid.row is equal to, so it starts from the top and it goes down. This is row zero, this is row one, and this row two, it starts at zero and the columns are the same way. It starts over here, and it goes over. This is like you're reading a book. You start here, you go over and down, and as you go farther, uh, the numbers go up. Okay? So this would be row zero, column zero. So grid.row zero and grid.column zero. Now it's explicitly said to be put in here. Uh, however, the whole text doesn't fit in here, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and uh, put something into this cell. Let me get another drink of coffee. Ah, that's good. <laughs> Let's put another stack panel into that that cell there. I don't know if that's the proper term, but that's what I'm going to call them. Help me memorize it. Uh, so grid.row, this is again row 0 because it's at the top. But the column, however, is now 1 because this is the first column. And notice now uh, it has these, I don't know, like a like a crosshair almost as to which cell we're now doing. If I change this to 2, you'll see the crosshair, whatever you want to call this, is over 1. So it gives you a sense as to where this is being placed. So here we can put another label. Um, and I will put something like this is in the second column. Cool. Now if we click back on our grid, or if we click back on this element, we can see all the grids, grid cells again. So if we wanted to go to this one, of course we don't have to go in order. If I wanted to put something right here, I could create another stack panel. I don't know what just happened. Do grid.row. And this row is going to be 2, 0, 1, 2, right? Grid.column is also going to be 2. And then we put a label in here. And we can say this is the last cell. And then if we wanted to below that, we can put, since it's another thing that we learned already, we can put a button. And the content of this button is going to say, click here for more. All right, so we made our, we made our grid, All right? You can make a nice user interface by doing something like this. All right, let's go ahead and look in the code behind, meaning this and place something in one of these cells um, after this button is clicked. So what we want to do is we want to, uh, let's go ahead and name this something. Let's name this main grid. Okay, that's not really necessary, but um, yeah, actually, I think it is. Uh, so when that button's pressed, let's go ahead and name that button. Where did it go? We do x colon name. And this is going to be more button. Cool. 
So now if we do click, we can create a new event handler. So let's double click that and then we'll see more button underscore click in the code behind. Here it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new uh, label or stack panel, I guess. And we're going to put a label inside of that and then place it in one of these cells. So to create a new stack panel, we're going to create a stack panel. Let's just call it stack equals new stack panel. OK, and then let's also make a label. Label, whoops, label, lab, I don't know, lab, I guess not lab. It's equal to new label. OK. So let's do stack.children.add. So it's going to add this inside of our stack panel, stack. And let's add lab. OK, so after some quick Googling, uh, Google, like I said, is your friend. We are going to set the grid.row and grid.column of our new stack panel stack. So we do stack.set value. And the first parameter is the property that we want to set, or the attribute. So we are going to uh, set first grid.row property. And we're going to set that. Which one should we put it at? Let's put it down here. Uh, so this would be the second row. So we'll put two. And then let's go ahead and set the value for dot column property. And let's set that at zero because it's the first column, right? OK, so we added label. Um, and then we set the value of our stack. However, we didn't add any text to label. So let's go ahead and is it content? I always forget if it's stuff is content or text. This is new. I don't know. Running out of good ideas. <laughs> Not that I had many to begin with. OK. So now we can go ahead and add stack to our grid. So if we do main grid dot children dot add, we can add stack. So let's go through real quick what just happened. OK, so we, uh, we created a new stack, or a new stack panel, and we called it stack. Uh, we created a label and called it lab. And then we set the content of this label to this is new. So it's going to read out that. Um, and then we added label to our stack. Uh, we set the row property of the stack panel to 2. And we also set the column to 0. And then we added the stack panel to the grid that we called main grid. So now if we run it, let's make sure it even works. Um, you know, that's the most important thing. Let's go ahead and click here for more. You can see it appeared right where we expect it, in the second row, the very first column. Beautiful. So that's a little bit about stacks. and No, no not stacks, about grids. Well, and a little bit about stacks. And how you can make them in the XAML, and you can also add to them in the code behind, which is pretty neat. So thanks for watching, guys. Appre appreciate you. And uh, it's a little longer of a video, but if you've stuck around, um, that's pretty awesome. I appreciate you guys. I'll see you in the next one.